Hi, welcome to another edition of Practical Welding Television. I'm Amanda Carlson. Gas metal arc welding, also known as MIG or wire welding, is one of the simplest welding processes to learn. However, a lot more goes into it than just pulling a trigger and laying a bead. We're hanging out with Mike and Larry from Rack Valley College again, and they're going to take us through the ins and outs of MIG welding. So let's check it out. We are in the shop with Larry Clevenger, and we're going to talk some MIG welding. Now, Larry, a lot goes into a MIG weld even before you lay a bead. Could you walk us through some of the steps to setting up your equipment? Sure. One of the things that we have to do is determine what size metal you're going to use. Now, if you're going to use quarter inch or bigger, then we're going to have to use a heavy duty machine, which is what this one 255 is. And we're going to then set the voltage and the, and the wire speed to the size of the metal that you're, that you're welding. Once we've determined the size metal that we're going to be using, we will now set the machine for that size. First, we're gonna look at, we have the O35 wire on here, and we're gonna determine the size metal. It will then tell us where to set our voltage at and our wire speed at. And then we will adjust the front knobs accordingly. This is a 140, 110 volt uh, machine. It's for light duty, auto body, lawnmower repair, bicycle repair, that type of thing like this here. It's good up to 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. We have the wire speed setting here. We have the voltage setting here. Now what we need to do is we will look in the chart and we will go down to what size metal we're welding. We'll go over here to the size wire we have and the gas coverage. It will tell us which ones to set it on. And then we can do our welding from there. Now that we've gone over voltage and wire feed speed, we need to talk about shielding gas. So Larry, if you could. Yes, we need shielding gas to uh, do this type of weld. And basically what we're gonna be using is 75 argon, 25% CO2, or 100% CO2. On this machine here, it has both settings, and the settings are a little bit different the type of gas that you use. Um, we're gonna set it Set our gauges at about 15 to 25 CFH. And then we can, that will give us enough coverage to keep the atmosphere away from the well. What can happen if you use too much gas? And what can happen if you, can, if you use too little gas? Well, if you have the pressure set too high and you're drawing in too much, you will draw atmosphere in and you will get porosity in the well. If you use too little, you will get porosity because it doesn't move the atmosphere away from the weld and make it a nice weld for you. And what, what, what does that look like in the, in the bead? Can you tell? It will be little pinholes and it'll be just all the way through the whole weld then. It makes a very weak weld. Okay. With wire feed speed, all of the rates that were suggested on the machine, it's, it's kind of a ballpark, correct? Yes. You got to figure out what works for you and it kind of helps if you can visually tell how, you know, if you're, if you're going fast enough, if, it, if it's coming out fast enough, or if it's too slow. So how can we tell that? Well, if one of the indicators, if you're going too fast, the machine, or the, the torch here, will bounce up and down like that there. And that would indicate to you that you've got too much wire coming out for the voltage that you have. So then you will slow the wire speed down. Now, if you slow it down too slow, then what happens is that the wire will then burn to the contact tip and it will look like that. All right, Mike, we've set our equipment. Now we gotta lay the bead. So take it from here. Okay, well, before we uh, start run, running our bead, we wanna, uh, first of all, get the machine set up. Then we wanna make sure that uh, we, we trim our wire to the correct distance, which is a uh, stick out of approximately three eighths, half an inch, something like that, ballpark inch. Now you don't want to uh, start out with a wire too long because it won't start strike the arc properly. So you want to make sure that it's trimmed before you ever even start. If you accidentally pull the trigger, the wire comes out, you need to retrim it before you start again. So now we've got a uh, wire uh, trimmed to the proper length. We want to get ourselves adjusted to the uh, proper position so that we're comfortable and also make sure that we have a uh, comfortable grip on the welding uh, gun. And we also want to establish our work angle and travel angle before we ever even start, start the weld. So now I've got those things established. I've got my 
establishing my uh, distance from the gun or tip of the nozzle to the work. Got that established and that should be approximately a half inch, give or take a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is start bead right here. Okay, this is the proper sound that you should be hearing when you're making the weld. Now I'm going to pull the gun back. I've got it too far away from the well. And that's what it should not sound like. If you don't have that frying bacon sound, there's probably something wrong. It may be the settings on the machine. It may be how you're holding the gun, the distance to the work. That will affect uh, the sound also. And that will also affect the soundness of the well. That, that's what happens when the wire feed speed is adjusted too high. The sound is very incorrect, and also look at the well. There's too much wire coming out too fast. Just as a reminder, now I'm, I'm going to demonstrate a weld and listen to the sound, and that's what uh, you should be listening for when you're making the weld. The sound should be like frying bacon. Always keep that in mind. Well, it's like I said, there's a lot to MIG welding. I want to send a special thanks to Mike and Larry and Rock Valley College again. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email me. Your question may be answered on an upcoming episode. If you'd like more information on MIG welding, please visit us on our website, www.fabricator.com, and click the welding text cell link, which is on the left-hand side of your screen. We'll see you next time.